Nine out of 10 parents say their children get enough sleep, but the truth is, in many cases, they do not. And alarming new information says overscheduled kids may face long-term damage if they keep losing sleep. Poe Bronson wrote an article called Snooze or Lose for this week's issue of New York Magazine, and he joins us this morning. Good morning, Poe. Good morning, Harry. Nice to see you again. So how much sleep are our kids losing, and how much should they have? Harry, despite everything we're doing as modern parents trying to provide the best environment for our kids, nevertheless, unwittingly, we've stolen an hour of their sleep over the last 30 years. This is true from elementary school to high school. We are showing some pictures now of kids, it looks like in a study hall or a classroom, passed out absolutely asleep. We've done medical stories on this that show that these kids are not, is it, is it the parents' fault that the kids aren't sleeping enough? And the kids are resisting it too. Parents need to be very strict and consistent with their bedtimes, but it's also school districts' faults, Harry. Uh, Schools are starting earlier and earlier in order to save money on buses, running them in two shifts. The high school kids are picked up at 6.30 to start school at 7.30, right. and then they pick up the elementary school kids later. And this lost hour of sleep, has we all know sleep matters. Right. It's remarkable how much it matters when you actually test it. So for instance, in one experiment, Dr. Avi Sade sent middle schoolers home and told half of them, get a half hour less sleep, and the other half get a half hour more. After three nights, he gave them an IQ test, and those who got less were testing two grade levels behind those who had an hour more of sleep. <laughs> I may just go to sleep right now. I'm sorry. Okay, we're going to pass out here. Uh, some studies have even attached lack of sleep to the obesity epidemic. Do you see any connection there? That's right. It spins the mind to hear that a key to staying thin is to do more of one of the most sedentary inactivities humanly possible. But that's exactly what scientists are finding. Sleep loss disrupts at least five hormones that regulate appetite and the burning of fat. Ghrelin, leptin, cortisol, insulin, and growth hormone. So as a result, this lost hour of sleep, for every hour less of sleep, kids' risk of obesity goes up 80%, a whopping 80%. Wow. So the more sleep they lose, the more apt it seems that they'll end up with problems with weight and obesity and everything that goes along with that, including self-esteem for, for all of that. That's right. Uh, in large data sets of kids, we can see this. Kids who sleep less are fatter than kids who sleep who sleep more. Wow. What symptoms should parents look for? I mean, if parents are trying to get their kids to sleep on time, I know a lot of kids will go to, you know, say, okay, good night, mom, you know, and they take the iPod to bed, they take their mm -hmm. cell phone to bed. What should they be looking for? 94% of high schoolers in one Rhode Island study were allowed to set their own bedtimes. Mm. So uh, symptom number one is just allowing your kid to set their own bedtime. Uh, inability to fall asleep, inability to maintain sleep, extreme di daytime sleepiness the next day. 25% of high schoolers are falling asleep in school at least one day a week. Right. That's another symptom. But here's a really crucial one. Uh, for, for adults, snoring, unless you're all the way to sleep apnea, it's right. not really considered a big risk. But just recently, pediatricians have realized, just recently, that any childhood snoring is a major risk factor. Wow. They're afraid the brain might be being, being, is being deprived of oxygen, and uh, if that's true, okay. even just a couple days a week, get your kid to a real sleep clinic. Wow. Okay, very, very quickly, what parents should do in the next 20 seconds or so if, if, to make sure that their kids get enough sleep and get on the right track here? Consistency of bedtimes, even staying up later on weekends for young kids is causing them to lose seven points of, on an IQ test. So right. consistency of bedtimes is what's most important to set the circadian rhythm system. There you go. Poe Brunson, thanks so much. Thank really you, Really appreciate it. In our next half hour, the 